America during the 1920s when, Mos uh, when uh, Mausoleum attempted to exterminate them. And America had our, you know, we had our Statue of Liberty. Give me your tired, give me your poor, your huddled masses yearning uh, to breathe free, the wretched, the wretched refuge of your uh, teeming shore. Send these the homeless, the tempters tossed to and me, and I left my lamp beside the golden door. And when the doors of America were opened, here came the mafia. Now, mafia in the old days was not just about making money and loan sharking and booze. It was also about respect. In the old days, then, men were called men of honor. They helped their local community. Brother Victor Alvarez said, it's not just enough preaching the gospel uh, amen. He said, you got to find out what your community needs and you need to fill that need. That? Of course, he only runs 500, so I'm pretty sure he knows what he's talking about. Amen. Amen. And that mafia, they met the needs, those men of honor, what the community needed. They couldn't go to the police because the police, amen, uh, they didn't even understand them. But if you needed immigration papers, you needed something taken care of, you didn't go to the, to the authorities. You went to the men of honor. You went to somebody, amen, uh, that could help them. Amen. God's uh, uh, men ought to be the same way, amen. A amen. Preachers ought to be men of honor that we can help our folks, amen. Uh, that we can help the church. Uh, we can help the sinners. Uh, we can help our community. Men of honor. They had a special code, and uh, everybody needs a special code. Every family needs a code in their house. We have one. Uh, we don't eat dinner, amen, until everybody's home. Amen. We just sit down and we'll just wait, amen. We'll wait till everybody shows up. Because nowadays everybody's crazy, you know, everybody's running around, amen. Now we're going to have family time. We're going to have family time, amen. We may never have family time the rest of the day, but we are at least going to sit down, amen, and argue with each other, amen, sometimes, uh, yell at each other sometimes, amen, but we're at least going to eat together, hallelujah, amen. It's not always like that, amen. <laughs> Every business has to have a code of conduct. The mafia, they had their own version of the Ten Commandments. Rule number one, appointments must be absolutely be respected. Meaning whoever was in charge is in charge. And uh, mafia rankings, you had your lowest uh, was the associates. They weren't actual mafia members. Uh, they just kind of hooked up with, you know, criminal elements that you had uh, your bankers and your cops and your lawyers, politicians, stuff like that. Amen. Then you had your soldiers. Amen. Uh, as the lowest ranks of uh, Costa Nostra, they did most of the dirty work. And uh, uh, that's where the kids would, you know, get their start. A a amen. Uh, hallelujah. That that's what you're supposed to do. Train them up. Amen. Uh, you had the capo. He was the captain of the lieutenant of the division. Uh, he had up the crew of the soldiers and uh, then you had the he was uh, directly responsible to the boss under boss and you had the consigliere he was a chief advisor he was to give uh, a man information based unbiased information what was best uh, for the family every pastor needs somebody like that that'll just be honest with them that will be like Jack Wood and say, you know what your problem is? Most pastors don't want a pastor. Brother Farley is my pastor. I've been in Conroe 13 years. He tells me to move. He tells me, all right, amen, you, time to go on. Amen, preacher, amen. Y'all didn't like that at all. I can see that right now, amen. You got to have a boss, Amen. Pastors hate bosses, amen. Evangelists hate bosses, amen. You got to have the underboss. He was second in command. 
he was there learning, amen, in case the boss, you know, wound up in the can, the pen, up the river, the big house, amen. And, uh, <laughs> but then you had the boss. He was uh, the one that made all the major decisions. He was the CEO of the company. He made the final decision. In the church, you got pastors, evangelists, missionaries, Sunday school teachers, church members, amen. In the home, you got husbands. He's supposed to be the head of the house. Supposed to, amen. Of course, nowadays, oh, don't let me, don't let me start there, Lord, amen. Amen. Supposed to be, amen. I tell you, your home's all upside down when the wife's in charge. Children don't know who to obey. Who's leading this thing? Amen. Rule number one, appointments must be absolutely be respected. Why the mafia do that? Less confusion, less bickering. Just do whatever your authority says to do and do it. Pastor says clap, clap. You should get rubbed out. Amen. He says, do it, just do it. Amen. You don't question why. Amen. Just do whatever the boss says. He should get whacked. I mean, he's getting killed. Amen. Isn't it amazing God has his own appointment? Why? Less bickering, less confusion. Somebody's got to be in charge. If you're married lady, it's supposed to be your husband. Amen. That doesn't mean you can't give your opinion. Amen. When decisions come up, amen. I want, you know, I want Italian. She wants, you know, Mexican. Amen. You know, kids want pizza. They always want pizza. Amen. Somebody has to pick. Amen. Somebody's got to be in charge. And that's just something minor. Some, somebody, most families run pretty smoothly. But every once in a while, everybody wants to go a different way. And somebody has to be in charge. No, we ain't doing it your way. No, we ain't doing it the kids' way. We're going this way. Amen. Pastor has final say. Amen. Amen. Whatever he says, just do it. Life would be a whole lot easier that way, amen? You got a job, the boss is in charge. And you can't, you know, that doesn't mean you can't voice your opinion. You may get fired, but amen. Amen. He was smarter than you. Amen. He married the owner's daughter, amen? So that's why he's in charge. You may be smarter, but you didn't marry the boss's daughter. So just do whatever the boss says. Boy, we got a problem with that one. Amen. I took a bunch of men out, and the pastor told me, he said, I want you to go to street preaching. Back then I was young. I don't know, am I a young man or an old man? I still haven't figured that one out from last night. Amen. So, uh... Amen. I asked Brother Jones. He said, I'm still a young man. So that, I, I like that one. Amen. Uh, but uh, I'm not even in my prime yet. A a amen. But, I, but somebody's got to be in charge. So some pastor asked me, he said, I want you to go street preaching. Take all the men with you. So I took them all out there, and I had one rule. You can preach on anything you want. There are 66 books. Just don't preach on hell. Give your testimony. Do whatever you want. There was always one, always one that ain't going to listen. He going to preach on hell? Hey Amen. We go street preaching. Hey Amen. We, we sing and then we give testimony. Hey Amen. That's how we do it. Hey Amen. However you do it's fine. Hey Amen. But when you tell somebody this is the way we're going to do it, this is the way it ought to be done. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. You better mark that man. He's a Saul. He's a Saul. You better mark him. I don't care how long he's been in the ministry. 
Mark him down. He's a rebel inside. Appointments must be absolutely be respected. I'll give you another. Thou shalt not kill. You say, well, I ain't never done anything like that before. Has your tongue ever killed somebody else? You ever run somebody off from church? Mafia, well, you can't kill unless you had a beef. Beef means you had a complaint, disagreement. Amen. You had to have a sit down with a higher level and the members had to discuss it and everything and you know, blood for blood, and, you know, if a family member's killed by another member, you just can't go out and do it without getting permission, amen? No fighting among members. That didn't ma it didn't matter whether it's fist fight or knife fight. A hit or an assassination was only ba made by a, man, a, a made man if approved by leadership. And nobody wanted that. Because you can't make money if everybody's going around killing each other. And the whole point is to make money. Amen. In the church. No fighting. No fighting. Paul said, you know, he wrote to the Corinthian church. He said, I speak to your shame. He said, why y'all going to court fighting all over this stuff? He said, you ain't got nobody, nobody that can judge. Hard to go about doing God's work when the church members are picking sides. Who they think is right. Well, I'm on his side. Well, I'm on her side. Why don't you stay on the church's side? Amen. Why don't you stay behind your pastor? Amen. Whatever he says, that's, what, that's good enough for me, amen. Well, you don't really know what happened, brother. Let me tell you. Oh, shut up, amen. Uh, amen. No fighting. Amen. This many preachers were bound to argue over some little old doctrine, amen. Then we're not going to be friends anymore. Amen. Every once in a while, I like to just rattle the cage. Amen. Just to see who my real friends are. Amen. I know. <laughs> I learned from you. <laughs> Mafia. You can't kill unless you're given the okay. That nah, blood was all right. It was all, all, you could shed it as long as you got permission. Can I say this? And I hope you don't take offense. The Lord done some killing in his day. Righteous killing. Isaiah 37, 36, the angel of the Lord went forth, smote the camp of the Assyrians, 104 score, 5,000. When they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. That's a lot of people. New Testament. And Ananias and Sapphira, they got caught up in giving, people getting saved, amen, people getting right. Barnabas sells a piece of land, gives the money to the church. And Ananias and Sapphira said, let's do that too, amen. Let's, let's, let's get into this giving. So they sold a piece of land. That's a good thing. And they decided to give the money, but they lied about how much it was. If they just would have told the truth, everything would have been fine. We gave half, we gave a fourth, we gave 10%, whatever, amen. I'll take the money, amen, hallelujah. That's L-U-P-E, amen, amen. I just want to make sure you got that right, amen. They wanted to get on the giving. But they lied. They lied. Instead of telling the truth, they lied to the man of God. They lied to the Holy Ghost. Amen. And Nias came in. Amen. They said, you know, I sold it for so much. That person, no. Mm -mm, no, he didn't. And he died right there in the church. Then they got the young man, not the old man. They got the young man, and they rolled him up. 
threw them in the back of the car, a couple shovels, bag of lime, took them out to the woods. You gotta have lime. Works best. Wife comes in, asks, you know, preacher asks the same question. How much did you, you know, how much did, did you get? She, she lied. She died. The young men came in, rolled her up, threw her in the back of the trunk, a couple more shovels, more lime, took her right back out to the woods, buried her. You start lying to the Holy Ghost, it'll be your turn. They're going to bury you. God has fear. The mafia has fear. You don't want to mess with them. And you don't want to mess with God. Great fear came upon all the church and has been upon as many as heard these things. The fear of the Lord is a beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fool, you ain't going to tell him what to do. You sure ain't going to show him how to do it. Amen. I want the house painted this way. You know what he's going to do? <laughs> Looks better that way. Yeah, but nobody told you. Amen. They wanted it this way. Either way, get the paint on. Amen. But one's rebellious. I don't know why I'm on that point. Amen. I gave you another. Amen. We better keep going. That's how not commit adultery. Why? You commit adultery, you get a jealous husband or wife, and you get shot. <laughs> Amen. You get divorced. Somebody else is raising your children now. I ain't never seen a day where, amen, kids are being raised and going back and forth. Amen. Quit all that fooling around. Mafia had a similar rule. Never look at a wife of a friend. Members are not allowed to commit adultery with another family member's wife. Why? Can't make money that way when everybody's jealous and everybody's fighting. You got to take care of business. Two men fighting over one woman, amen? It's bad for business, amen? You cannot make money. Wives, mafia rule, must be treated with respect. Saturday and Sunday was for the family. He took the wife out, showed her a good time. A lobster, caviar. I, I didn't get one lady to say amen right there, amen. <coughs> Treat her with respect. Friday night was for the girlfriends. <laughs> Mafia rules. And if your wife knew you was fooling around, you didn't put her nose in it. God has... Certain rules for the church. You're supposed to treat the women in the church with respect. Some ought to be treated as your grandmothers. Don't be talking back to your grandmother. Well, she's cranky. We know that already, amen? What does that got to do with anything? Grandpa's cranky. Amen. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. I ain't never seen so many young people disrespectful in all my life. Amen. Others. Amen. That's why we use the word brother, sister. We're supposed to treat everybody with respect. Amen. Amen. And let me say this, if you're married, amen, you guys, amen, amen, somebody wants your wife. And you ladies, there's some guy, amen, that, that, amen, that want, amen, that wants your wife. And for you ladies, there, there's some, there, there's, there's some other, amen, that wants the other one, amen. You know what I mean. Somebody say amen right there. There might be, yeah, that's right, amen. Mm. 
I've seen it done. I don't know how many times. That's because you treat that woman, amen, and drag her around. Always putting her down. Never trying to help her. You got to be a blessing. You don't got to cook tonight, baby. We're going to take you out. Say, ain't got no money. Work. Make some money. Hey, man. Got to buy her some flyers every once in a while. I don't like this at all. I can tell that right now. Amen. They treat them women with respect. Don't be messing around. Treat some like grandmothers, others like mothers, others as younger sisters. I better keep going. Thou shalt not steal. Why God put that in there? At least you go to jail. At least you go to prison. You might get shot. Mafia rules, amen, amen. Thou shalt not steal from other family members. That's all right to steal. Just don't do it from other family members, amen. Why? Amen. Uh, you start robbing other members, uh, boss is going to kill you. Amen. Yeah. Thou shalt not steal. Don't take the songbooks. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Don't be borrowing stuff that you ain't going to return. Yeah. Lawnmowers. Yeah. Books. Yeah. I had a guy send me a book, and I said, man, what a blessing. Look at this. He sent me a book. Isn't this wonderful? And I opened up, and I said, wait a minute. I think I got this book. And I started looking at it more. It was my book. <laughs> I don't know how many more he kept. Amen. Uh, that shall not steal. Don't be taking somebody else's stuff. Amen. Yeah. Don't take the church's stuff. Don't take your neighbor's stuff. Don't take the stuff from work. It's not yours. Yeah. Leave it alone. Yeah. I give you another. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Why? Lion's wrong. People lose trust in you. You get a bad reputation. It becomes addictive. Mafia rule. When asked for any information by the boss, the answer must be the truth. It's called going on record. Here's this group that goes around making money by lying, by staying alive by lying. But when the boss asks you, he expected the truth. He wants to know the truth. Amen. Quit all your lying. We don't lie. We're all saved. Quit your lying. Amen. <laughs> Quit your lying about lying. Amen. <laughs> Boss expects the truth. Less problems. Less revolts. I give you another one. Here's a good rule. Always be available for Costa Nostra duty, even if your wife is about to give birth. In the mafia, the family always comes first. God, he's got similar rule. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of hope that is with you with meekness and fear. We're supposed to be on call 24 hours a day. Amen. We're supposed to be ready anytime, any place to be able to present the gospel. It doesn't matter whether you, amen, whether you've been called to preach, not been called to preach. Amen. You ought to be at least be able to give your testimony. I tell you what scares me is people that don't have a testimony. They can come to church 20 years and I, I still don't know how they got saved. And that's scary. Amen. I give you another. 
you got to kick up, kick up money, tribute. Every, every month, members had to pay the balls. Whatever deals they made, they meant to take some money to pay off judges and police officers, lawyers. Take some money to buy them big houses and expensive cars. God talks about money. Tithing, amen. Bring all the tithes to the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now, herewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, and there shall not be room enough to receive it. You ain't got enough room. I was looking in my garage. I was going, we ain't got enough room. We got too much stuff. Amen. Four-wheelers, motorcycles. Amen. I still ain't got all the stuff I got in Conroe. Amen. It's still sitting in the attic. Oh, I said, you going to throw that away? I, said, I may need it one day. Amen. I know. I ain't throwing it away. See, you don't even know what's up there. It doesn't matter. I might need it. Amen. It's my stuff. We <laughs> throwing away my stuff. The promise is if you tithe, he said, I load you so much, you won't even know where to put it. There shall not be room enough to receive it. You ain't got room. If you tithe, if you give, Hey man, no, the Lord said, give, it should be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. And here comes the good part. Shall the pasture and the church give unto your bosom? No, that's not what it says. Shall men give unto your bosom? Men. Give and it shall be given. You know, you can't outgive God. You cannot outgive God. Some folks, they just ain't never figured that out yet. Amen. They still in the baby stage. They can't even tithe, much less give to mission. Now, this church, it's a mission giving church. Thank God for that. Amen. Then there's love offerings. You learn to give. God says he's a giver. I'm going to give back. I'm going to give back through men. Good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together. That's, that, that's pretty good. Amen. That's pretty good. Eh? I, I'm telling you, I, I, I don't know how many times. I don't know how many times people say, well, you know, I could never give like you. I said, I'm a wimp compared to giving with, with Brother Jack. Brother Farley. Amen. I learned to give because those men learned to give. Hey Amen. My giving's wimpy compared to theirs. Amen. I'm telling you, you got to learn how to give. If you give, amen, give God, God will give back. Amen. At least the mafia gives. If the mafia can do it, why can't we do it? A bunch of sorry people like them can give. Why can't we give? I didn't like that at all either. Amen. Mafia got rules and regulations, never be seen with cops. They had the code of silence, never talked to authorities. Family secrets were not to be to, not, not allowed to be talked about. No homosexuality. 1992, John D'Amato, he was acting boss, and he kind of went, and uh, they kind of went, oh, amen. <laughs> amen. Don't go to pubs. Mafia rule. Don't go to pubs. Don't go to clubs. No kidnapping. No mugging. No drugs. Rules and regulations. We got some. Abstain from all appearance of evil. If it just looks bad, don't do it. Amen. Amen. Drink a root beer, amen. Get your can root beer. Don't get one of them. Looks like a beer. Amen. I can go all over the place there. Amen. But I ain't got time. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. There's just certain things we shouldn't do. There are certain places. Amen. I know they got the best hamburgers. Amen. 
but there's certain restaurants you shouldn't go to. Amen. There's some places you just need to stay away. Amen. If it even looks evil, don't go. The mob was into everything. Internet crime, human trafficking, food fraud, sports corruption, union infiltration, loan shark and drugs, you name it. Amen. One guy would buy gasoline. He'd start up a company, start buying gasoline, and he'd sell it. But he wouldn't pay any taxes. Have you looked at the little sticker, how much they charge in taxes? That was profit for him. And six months later, he he shut down. They kept sending him letters. Hey, man, you know, you need to pay your taxes. You need to pay your taxes. He just shut it down and started a new company. He was making $1.92 a gallon. Hey, man. Hey, man. They was into everything. You know why the mob went down? They didn't follow their own commandments. You know why the church is in such trouble that it's in? We're not following the commandments. We've strayed from the old past. Most people that call themselves mafia today, they wouldn't even know what the mafia Ten Commandments were. John Gotti broke every old world, old school code of the American mafia. He killed his own boss. It was a hit. It was never sanctioned. The reason he hit him was because he was selling heroin. Then he started selling heroin in his own neighborhoods, down in Queens. Gotti grew up in the American-born child of pop culture. He wanted to be famous, sort of like some of you preachers want to be famous, want to be rich, you want to be powerful. John Gotti, he wore $2,000 suits. $2,000. He talked about my public. My public. He was on Time Magazine. He blew up the image and put it in his club. He made cover of People Magazine, the New York Time Magazine. What brought the mafia down? Pride. The old mafiosos, they had a code of silence. Nobody even knew who they were. I mean, nobody. I mean, you could go in the, in the 50s in the libraries, the tabloids, the newspapers, you didn't find one picture of the mafiosos. It was secrecy and discretion. Amen. That's why the Lord said, you, you want some power? Go into your closet and pray. He ain't supposed to be seen. Amen. Now we come down the altar and weep and holler and scream and everything else. Because we want to be seen. I didn't kill the meeting. Amen. I can see that right now. Amen. Pride. Them old time mafiosos, one of the uh, one of the dons, he old timers, he owned his own pizza parlor. He'd take your order, he'd cook it. He'd clean your table. He'd serve. He'd bring you the check. Make sure and leave a tip. You want to make sure and leave a tip, though, amen? He stood in the background. He didn't want anybody to know what he was doing. Amen. He didn't make a public show. What brought the mob down? Too much money. Jimmy the Gent Burks robbed $6 million in cash and jewelry from the Lustanza cargo terminal in John F. Kennedy. Uh, back in 78, uh, uh, during the early hours, they came in there and they got permission from two of the crime families because they owned that airport, two different families. And they controlled it and Burke and his son went in there and they robbed the place. And when he found out how much money was there, he was shocked. And he said, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. We're going to have every local, state, and federal authority looking for us now. Because it was too much money. You know what gets most Christians, amen, 
in trouble? Too much money. Amen. That's why you just need to give it away. Amen. Keep that bank account. Amen. Pay your bills. Amen. Pay your bills. Amen. Pay your credit cards off. Save all you can. Give all you can. Spend the rest. Amen. But you ought to give. At least you get in trouble. I'm telling you, the church, we got in trouble because we got too much. We got too much. They started following him, and he didn't want to get caught, so to make sure he didn't get caught, people started dying. Parlene Stevens, Shacks, he was found shot to death in his apartment. Lois Kafara, known as Fat Louie, him and his wife were missing, and uh, they never did find them. Robert McCain, his close friend Joe Murrow, was shot dead in a Buick outside of uh, uh, Brooklyn in 1979. There was another guy, he was found shot to death, and he was in a garbage can. There was a woman by the name of Teresa Farah. She just happened to be at a club where these guys were all at, hanging out. And they were talking about it. She was just there to have a good time. But she overheard them talking. And she was in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong people. And the next thing you know, they find her floating down the river, down in New Jersey. I'm telling you, you can get in trouble real quick. They, I, Martin Krugman, he was the bookmaker. They killed him. Jimmy the Gent, when they finally brought him to court, he said, he said it was too much money. He said, we, I knew he was in trouble. He said, I was trying to cut all ties. Uh, you can run from God, but let me tell you, you can run. You can't hide, Amen. You can run, but you can't hide. Sooner or later, God's going to catch up. Amen. He's going to catch up. Too much money. What brought the mob down? Pride, the RICO Act, Witness Protection Program. U.S. Marshals started that in 1970. They started bugging all them people, hearing their conversations. I heard on the on the radio, a young man, uh, he's talking about his baby laying in the baby crib. He said, I got one of them webcasts to watch my son. He said, well, I'm at work. He said, the baby's just young. And he said, and some pervert hacked him and was saying dirty stuff to the baby. God's listening. The devil's listening. Amen? They got all those conversations. They put all them conversations down and said, we got you, buddy. You got a choice. Either tell us about your boss or you're going to go to the penitentiary the rest of your life. And they started rats, stool pigeons, snitches. They started ratting out everything they knew. They just started singing like little birdies, amen. They didn't want to go to prison. They got in that new program, amen. There was a guy, he joined the witness protection program. He was an ex-mafioso, Joe Dogs. And while he was in the witness protection program, he wrote a cookbook, the Mafia Cookbook, amen. He didn't want any attention. David Letterman heard about it and said, hey, you want to come on the show and cook for us? And he wasn't supposed to. You know, you're in the witness protection program. There's somebody out there who wants to kill you. He said, well, David Letterman's my hero. He said, I'm going to go on it. He starts cooking and getting everything ready for the show. And somebody in the back goes, Is, ain't he mob? Yeah. Don't we live in New York? Yeah. Don't we have mobsters here? Yeah. Anybody afraid the mob's going to show up and... Kill us! And they canceled the show and went over there and told him. They said, we're not having you on the show. We're going to get, we can't do it. And he threatened David Letterman. 
He threatened to kill them. They say there's 10,000 in the witness protection program, men, women, families. They all got a new chance at life. The only problem was they all got a new life, but they still had the same soul, the same heart. They still had the same lifestyle. Oh, they're living like normal people, but they still got the same heart. Killing, lying, stealing. Only one that can change and give you a new life. Uh, uh, that's the lovely Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, he's the only one. Uh, uh, the thief coming not but for to steal and kill and destroy. I am come. They might have life and they might have it more abundantly. You tell me you're a Christian and you still got the same lifestyle you've always had? I, I hate to pop your little bubble, but you ain't saved. In a group like this, amen, uh, I'm pretty sure there's a few sinners right here, amen. Uh, need to get born again, need to get blood washed. You done heard all the preaching, amen. Why don't you just stop faking it, amen, get saved. Get a real new life. Mob's downfall didn't follow its own commandments, pride, and money, witness protection program. What's bringing the church down? We're not following the commandments. It's not the Ten Suggestions. It's the Ten Commandments. And just like the mafia doesn't know what their own rules were, most Christians don't even know uh, what the commandments are any, anymore. Amen. What's bringing the church down? No order. Everybody wants to be the boss. Hey man, I've seen church splits. Deacons want to run the church. We see it in marriages. Everybody wants to be in charge. Too many bosses. Too many bosses. What's bringing the church down? Lukewarm Christians. They got lives that are sinful. They strive for higher positions. They indulge in destructive criticism. They have the attitude it can't be done. They're mean, selfish, stingy, lazy. They gossip. They're oversensitive. They're unfaithful. I'll tell you, that's what's bringing the church down. Mafia, you just couldn't join because you wanted to. You had to be asked. Al Capone could not join the Mafia because his blood was not 100% Italian blood. You had to be made. When the crime family opened up the books that, that accepted new members, they'd call the associate. He'd get a phone call. He was to put on the best suit he had, get ready, he'd be, pick, be picked up. They'd take him to a room, and they'd have a ceremony. And in that ceremony, he would take the oath, the armada, the, the mafia code of silence. Through that silence, they'd poke one of his fingers and blood. They'd, they'd, they'd take a picture of one of the saints, the Virgin Mary, St. Francis of Assisi. They'd, they'd put that blood on there, and then they'd, they'd burn that picture. And he'd have to say, as the card burns, my soul burn in hell if I betray the oath of a martyr. Or as burns the saints, so will I burn my soul. I enter alive and I will have to get out dead. So it is with the Lord. You just can't go to heaven because you want to. You just can't get saved because you want to. And you just can't be a Christian. No man cometh to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. God has to draw you. That's why you're in service this morning. Amen? Amen. Because God's trying to draw you. Then you got to repent. you got to repent of your sins. I was at a, at a funeral and a guy got up and said, you know, if you want Jesus, and he gave a good testimony about Christ, and it was a great, amen, uh, uh, the message was about Jesus. And I said, well, that's pretty good. But he didn't mention anything about repentance. Next thing you know, he said, how many of y'all like to go to heaven? Five people raise their hand. They all want to go to heaven. Repeat after me. Then they go to eat, and one of the guys that, you know, 
said the little prayer and supposed to be saved. He's drinking a Budweiser. He said, I think, we asked him, he said, uh, one of my men asked him, he said, I thought you said you got saved. No, don't talk to me about that right now. You got to repent of your sins. You got to repent. Amen. You got to repent. You got to confess. Amen. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You say, it's, you say, that's too easy. Well, how come you ain't done it yet? You want to go to heaven? You got to be born again. Blood washed. We went on vacation in New York City a while back and a couple of years ago. and We wound up going to Staten Island for Wednesday night service. And the preacher told me how to get there. We went on the ferry and we went to service. And he was going to take us out to eat that night. He said, we'll drive you back to New York. And uh, him and his wife. And he said, we're going to take you to Little Italy. And they were Italian and he said, we're going to take you to a good place, go, go eat. I said, oh, man, real Italian. You got me fired up now, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and he says, is there anything you want to see while you're here? Broadway show, you know, the Statue of Liberty or anything? I said, I was just kidding around. I said, man, I'd sure like to see some mafiosos. <laughs> he looked at her and she looked at him. They looked at each other again and he said, well, I guess we can take him to go see your cousins. As long as there's bullets, there'll be a mob. As long as there's bullets, uh, there'll be a mafioso. They may not be as powerful as they used to be, but they're still around. Uh, and the church, uh, the church may not be what it was uh, 100 years ago, 50 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, but the church is still going to go on. Amen. As long as we got a few old men still around a praying, church going to go on. Church going to go on. Can I ask you this morning? Have you maybe put something down in your life, one of them old time ways? Maybe you need to come back and pick it up. Why are you in this thing? Are you here because you want to be a blessing? Are you here for a paycheck? Oh, yeah. Amen. What are you here for? If you're going to live for God, I'm telling you, you're going to need them old time ways. Maybe some of them rules and regulations you put down. Maybe there's some things that you just need to pick back up again. If you're going to make it and you're going to survive till Jesus comes, amen, amen you're going to, have to get back in that book, get back on your knees, go back them old-fashioned ways, amen, or you ain't going to make it. You're not going to make it. Amen, preacher.